This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Post fight with Chris Eubank Jr. It's done, got the win. Before we get started, I've heard you've had a, a couple of alcoholic beverages. Do you want to go there? Well, I'd, I'd love to. I, I just want to know how much you've had to drink. Why? Well, Why is it relevant for this interview? Being, being interviewed by a drunk Coogan Cassius, that's, that's the first time for me. We've been doing this for years. Are you drunk? To be fair, since 2011, I've been drunk every time I've interviewed you. <laughs> there you go. Here's a revelation you didn't know. I don't need to get drunk to interview you, by the way. Okay, so nerves, right? No. A couple of fans bought me drinks tonight. Okay. So I was just getting into the kind of the Welsh atmosphere as we're here, away from home. Is that all right? Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy yourself, man. I love the way that that's the first question you want to talk to me about. You know, I heard you were getting on the sauce, and I thought I'd ask about it, let you interview you a little bit. But go ahead. What do you want to ask me? Okay. Uh, your assessment um, of your own performance tonight? Domination, which is what I said I would do. Dominate him. Punish him. Make him pay for what he said. Um, you know, I, I showed him that there are levels to the game and that he is not on my level. Did Liam Williams put up a better performance than what you expected, or not? No, absolutely not. Um, yeah, you know, he when he when he got hurt, he didn't. You know, I, I saw it in his eyes and in the way he was fighting that he didn't want to be there. Um, I, you know, I wasn't actually expecting that. I thought, you know, when when I watched him fight Andrade, he, he kind of, uh, you know, when he when he got rocked or hurt, he kind of. That spurred him on a little bit, you know. With me, he knew this is this is the beginning of the end, and it wasn't going to stop. Can we talk about all the knockdowns that occurred How many in the there? fight? I actually lost count. Four. Four? It's not bad. It's about right. Okay. So your recollection of those knockdowns? Just nice, clean, perfectly timed jabs, you know, which is. That was actually the main thing I wanted to showcase in this fight because I'm just so sick and tired of hearing people say I don't know how to jab, you know. I've, I've seen it so much over the years. He doesn't have a jab. He doesn't have footwork. So I was like, you know what, let me go out here in this fight and just, just display what it is that I've actually been doing my whole life, you know. Um, and I, I had fun. A question I asked you three days ago when we did our interview in our hotel room was, had you been more active in your career, would this have been a fight that you would have taken? You said probably not if the kind of things have gone how you would have envisaged in your head. But having had this fight now, what does this win over Liam Williams now do for your career? Every win pushes you up the ladder. It gets you the exposure. It gets you the hype. Um, and it puts you in position to fight for world titles. Um, you know, the reason I said it wouldn't have happened... But, you know, if I'd been more active, is because I, I, I actually was in the States. That's where I was set to fight for probably the rest of my career. But COVID messed it up. Came back to England, um, and yeah, and and now we're and and I, and I love I love fighting here. You know, even though the crowd out there is throwing drinks, and even after the fight, you know, can't even repeat some of the things they said. Um, but, you know, it's, I, I, I was expecting it, but at the same time, it's like, if you're a true boxing fan, you shouldn't really have, you know, you shouldn't really have hate or malice towards a fighter who goes out there and does his job and, you know, is a professional and wins in, in, in a convincing fashion. You know, so I was a bit disappointed that some of the fans seemed to be uh, still angry. But, you know, I guess I did showboat a little bit. Um, listen, the guy's a dirty fighter. I, I don't know how he didn't get disqualified with all the headbutts and the, the, the headlocks that he put me in. Um, I don't know how he didn't dis get disqualified. And that's why in the 12th round, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to play with this guy. I'm going to have fun. I'm, I'm not going to, what am I going to do? Risk, risk getting cut by a silly headbutt or a silly shot and then end up messing up my fight in the summer? No, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I've beaten him convincingly. There's nothing more I can do. Uh, go out there, have fun, and, and get the W. Prior to this fight, the three high-profile fights you've had in your career were Saunders, Groves, and DeGale, two of which didn't go your way. Do you class this fight in with those three? I would say so. Yeah, this is this is this was a big fight. It was a lot of there was a lot of hype. There was there was a lot of attention on this fight. 
um, you know, main event on Sky Sports. Yeah, this was a big fight. Domestic fights are always massive and uh, they're always very fun to be a part of. Chris, I heard a, say a rumour, but I heard something earlier on that you requested that no women that were involved in your family be present at your fight. Can you make a comment on that? Absolutely. I can't have my mother and my, uh, my aunties and, you know, female cousins um, involved in or being around what I had to go through. That's, you know, you, you can't do that. And I'm glad, I said they shouldn't come to the, because they were asking me to come to the press conference and I'm glad that I saw what it was going to be like you know, I saw what it was there, and I was like, okay, well, it's going to be way worse than that on the night, so they can't be here. I can't let them, I can't expose them to that, you know. If it's a neutral fight, then it's, it's fine, but when it's, when you're going into someone's backyard and you're people out in the crowd that genuinely hate you, you, you can't have your, the, the, the women in your family around that. Well, I, I can't personally, anyway. There was there were security that was genuinely worried about turning your sister Emily away from the fight tonight. That, that, was, that is serious. They were actually worrying about that kind of situation. Yeah, well, listen, you know, we, you know, we, we nearly got into it at the at the press conference with, well, not me, but you know, team members nearly got into it with, uh, you know, some of the fans out there. You know, they, you know, they're they're a rowdy bunch up here, the Welsh. You know, I love them, but they, uh, yeah, they 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 like to have it. So uh, I got to leave the women at home. Okay, fair enough. Um, just before I let you go, uh, first of all, how's the hand? The hand's fine. The hand's fine. Just a bit of swelling. Um, yeah, you know, injured it in the third or fourth round. Um, you know, if 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 I if I didn't injure it, I would have I would have stopped. I would have beaten him just on the jab. You know, but uh, you know, maybe, maybe I'm I'm happy I, I injured it because it enabled me to, uh, you know make the the you know what i wanted to do last longer which is which is punish him and and make him eat his words because he said some some crazy things leading up to the fight um which i i, I cannot forgive yeah I, I do want to address that because obviously um i saw some comments that the board are going to look into some of liam williams comments talking about wanting to kill you etc what, what's your thoughts about that listen this, i mean that i don't care about that you can tell me you're going to kill me all day i'm i'm happy i'm fine with that but when you start talking about family members and you know it's just it's disgusting you know and people like that shouldn't be you know they shouldn't be a part of boxing um it's, it's just not good for the sport you know um you know, even him telling me, you know, telling the public, I'm a dirty fighter, you know, I'm going to use my elbows. And, and he did it. The sick thing is he actually did it. He fought like the dirtiest fighter I've ever fought and didn't get disqualified. Elbows, headbutts, headlocks. Every time he's got me down uh, up, up against the rocks, he's literally, I can feel him tr grabbing my neck and, uh, and, tr and trying to choke me. I actually, I bit his hand one time. He... <laughs> I, I I just remembered this. He, so he, my head's down, and he's 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 put his he's put his arm around my neck, and his gloves like gone towards my mouth, and he's like choking me, and I can feel it. And I went ah, and I bit his I bit his hand to try and stop him from doing it. <laughs> I've never done that before in my life. I've never bitten somebody in the ring. Um, but you know that's the, uh, that's the type of fight I was expecting. I knew he was gonna I knew he was gonna fight dirty because he said he was, uh, and that's another reason why I kind of just stayed off him in the twelfth round. You know. Didn't want to get cut. Didn't want to get any stupid things happening. The fight was won. Chris, I don't know if you know, but uh, Conor Bennett just put a tweet out. Can we actually get the tweet up, please? Uh, he just wants to make it a catchweight. Yeah. He wants to make it a catchweight. He's put a video, uh, like a tweet and a video out tonight. Um, is it realistic, that? Yeah, yeah. What did he say? I fancy my chances at a catchweight. Yeah, listen. If the fans want to see it, if he can move up... Um, Jesus, I mean, how, what a fight that would be! I mean, it would, it would be, you know, it, it would, yeah, that would be incredible. The two, the two sons, Chris Eubank Jr., uh, Connor Ben. I mean, yeah, who wouldn't want to see that? I'd want to see that uh, if I was a fan. But the likelihood of it, I, I really doubt that it's going to happen anytime soon. I see that as something that's probably going to happen in years to come when, uh, you know, I've done everything I want to do at middleweight and. Um, and yeah, you know, we want to have we want to have a bit of fun further down the line. But who knows? We'll see. Just finally, before I let you go, sorry, your team is actually like 
Is that right? One more question? Yeah. Is that He's right? drunk. Just, just give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> Am I holding it together, though? Yeah, just about. One more. I'll let you know how many vodkas I've had after this interview. Um, you talk about fighting in the summer. What's the target? What's the immediate target now that you will talk to your team about? I've, I've said it. I, w- I want to fight for a world title. Put Triple G in front of me. Put Rota Murata in front of me. Get me a world title shot. Um, it's easier said than done, I understand, especially with this, this COVID. You know, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, put a big name in front of me. We want the big names. We want, we want the names that the fans are going to get excited about. Chris Eubank Jr., thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Appreciate it. I've had 19 vodkas since I've been here. Shots? You know, 19 vodka and Diet Cokes. Wow. You are a barbarian. You think I'm doing well, actually, holding this together? If that's true, then yeah. You, you. If it's true, it's about as true as your microwave story, by the way. No, <laughs> listen, my microwave story is very true, mate. But I don't know if, if you... that's true, then this is true. I've had 19 vodkas. Anyway, have you got anything else you'd like to add before no, we finish? No, no, no. I'm, I'm done. I'm happy. Gonna go back to England. Uh, yeah, go back to England. It's crazy to think I'm in a different country right now, and uh, yeah, celebrate. Congratulations, and yeah, onwards and upwards. Absolutely.